Good evening, K-Man. Did you hear that the progressive train pulled out of his station and came in Brack on Thursday night? With hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people looking at it as it pulled out and jumping on. And tonight, what a great pleasure to see this massive crowd here for the second stop of the train. Thank you all for coming out tonight. When this government came into office, bold promises were made to this country. We pledged to stabilize the economy. Some said it couldn't be done. To restore trust and confidence in government and to put our country back on a path toward sustainable growth and development. We have delivered. By holding true to those commitments, confidence in political leadership has been restored. The path to economic prosperity has been redefined, and we have returned our Cayman Islands to a destination that is attractive to both visitors and most importantly, the Caymanian people themselves. Tonight in my short time, I wanna focus on tourism, the economy, and the jobs. The economic impact that we had to provide for this country when we were elected. Tourism arrival statistics are generally viewed as a barometer of the industry's success, but perhaps a more important indicator of tourism performance is its contribution to the Cayman economy. Its contribution to jobs, small business, medium-sized business, large business, way of life, in 2016, real numbers, we did 40,000 more arrivals for stayover than we did in 2013. In 2016, we had 341,000 more people arrive here by cruise ship than we did in 2013. What that means in a dollar value is the stayover visitors spent 50 million more dollars by the 40,000 new visitors that we had. The new 341,000 cruise passengers spent 40 million dollars more in 2016 than they did in 2013. What do you think would have happened to the taxis, the tour operators, and the small businesses that depend on tourism as an industry and a way of life if we hadn't grown this industry in those two years? The impressive growth in tourism arrivals didn't happen by accident. Rather, this success is the result of careful planning and decisive action. It is due to the proactive efforts of the people you see sitting right here, the people that were in government and had to make decisions, had to take our economy back, had to build it for our way of life, for our benefit and our opportunity. We had to create the environment for each of us to have the Caymanian dream, to have success in our homeland. I've said many times, there are no magic formulas to drive visitation to the Cayman Islands. There are no one-size-fits-all solutions that automatically bring growth. Rather, it takes a sound understanding of the opportunities and challenges and the willingness to do something about it. This government has delivered. Very early, in our term of office, we forecast the need 
for additional accommodations to keep pace if we were going to bring increased arrivals. We currently have 6,000 rooms that are available, 6,000 keys. In 2013, we had 5,400. We've grown that by 10%. But the strategy in growing room stock is to diversify your product and to look at how you could include the shoulder season and level it out. Conferences, sporting events, weddings, culinary, nature, cultural, and medical tourism are all in the forefront of how we are attracting people here and building our industry. Along with the increase in rooms and diversification of our tourism product, we have positioned Cayman Airways to support this growth, to support the new arrivals, and with the fleet change of the new Boeing 37 MAX 8s and the two Saabs for Cayman Brac and the two Twin Otters for Little Cayman, we will have the newest fleet in the region. But before I leave, the subject of Cayman Airways, I want you to realize that 95% of the employees at Cayman Airways are Caymanian. And that starts with the CEO, it goes to the pilots, it goes to the mechanics, and it goes right down to the interns that are training to pick up the new jobs. These are the industries that we have to build and keep for ourselves. These are the industries that provide the types of jobs that Caymanians need to qualify in, the types of jobs that we have qualified in, and the types of jobs that this government will continue to make sure that Caymanians take advantage of and are trained in. How many of you have driven close to the airport lately? Have you seen the new airport being built out there? 15 years people talked about building that airport, but it took the premier and this government to do it because we get things done. Think about the new jobs that we provided there. Think about the experience that the tourists that come to our shores will have when they go through a new airport that's five times bigger than what we had there presently. There's another thing unique about it. It's on budget and it's on time. And we never borrowed one penny to build it. And the contract has been delivered by a Caymanian contractor who has two, two Caymanian contractors who have delivered it on budget and on time. When you drive around and you see the new roads being built, Understand that infrastructure needs are because your country is growing and developing because of this government. How do we make sure that we, the Caymanians, benefit from the new growth, the new businesses that we bring to our shores? The hospitality school is open three years. Graduates are in place in the industry itself. A partnership between private sector and government. They talk about a vocational school. This is the model that we have delivered. And the statistics show 50% of the students go into the tourism industry and take the jobs and are working there happy. The other 50% are pursuing further education at university, here or abroad. This, my notes say, applause. I want you to think of that as phase one. 
We are here. We are able to deliver phase two because we knew that we had to put a platform in place for us to continue the growth of our great country, our great three islands. Think about the sustainability of where we've come from and the three years that we have shown you what we've done. On the books are 1,000 new hotel rooms because of the confidence that investors have in this government. Those will be delivered over the next four years. Along with the construction jobs, along with the hospitality school that is enlarged and made bigger to make sure that the Caymanians can be provided the skill sets they need to take advantage of the rooms and the opportunities that are coming. Cayman Airways will have the ability to open new routes, to look at new an expanding core market to bring a diversified clientele. Southwest comes in June. Southwest Airlines is the largest provider of flights in the United States, which is our core market. Immediately, we see the growth potential there and what is ahead of us. I say these things to you to give you comfort and to understand that when you're looking at opportunity and looking at the next four years and what our phase two and what we have planned and what we need to get continuity in and get back after it after the 24th, it gives you great comfort to know and understand that more things are coming down and it is sustainable for all of us. Mr. Kurt Tibbetts is telling me I'm out of time. I don't know if that's really true or he just cut me off. I want to say to you that it is an absolute great pleasure to be able to work with individuals that I've had the, the honor of working with in the last four years. I said this in Cayman Brack and I'll say it again here tonight. Is there anyone here that needs a job? Look at who's sitting here. Every person here is here because of love of country and because they want to give time back to their country. So when you leave here tonight, remember this. May 24th, vote straight, vote progressive. Thank you.